welcome back to the class uh, we are continuing our discussion on um, this uh, important theme on globalization uh, literature that is uh, the whole questions around uh, spatiality and temporality of a globalized world so a, a series of uh, discussions and debates about uh, themes uh, related to space uh, place uh, time and flows so these are the some of the important uh, Uh, themes around which uh, globalization debates really is uh, raging so we uh, briefly discussed uh, saskia sasan uh, yesterday uh, and uh, we also discussed uh, david harvey and uh, uh, anthony giddens in the previous classes and from today onwards uh, we are uh, starting uh, a slightly detailed discussion on another very important uh, uh, towering personality a very important uh, you know scholar uh, on globalization again a sociologist his name is manuel castells so um castles uh, is a very important uh, figure uh, we will um, have i think uh, four hours four classes on uh, discussion on manuel castles uh, his uh, theory on network society has been extremely uh, influential um, you know his he has one of the very uh, broad ambitious theory about globalization of the contemporary times uh, where he has very interesting take about this uh, the, tempo, the 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 temporal and the socio temporal dimensions of uh, globalization uh, so uh, just have a very brief look at uh, manuel casas he was born in spain uh, he is from spain born in 1942 castles had to move to france due to his uh, student activism he was very uh, you know actively uh, participating in student politics and then had to flee the country and uh, completed his phd from university of paris in 1967 and after that he moved to the us where he uh, you know worked in uh, university of california uh, in joint in 1979 and uh, considered to be one of the most uh, uh, important one of the most influential uh, you know sociologists on uh, the new uh, globalization so his theory is about uh, informationalism his theory about uh, network societies his theory about uh, spaces of flows his theory about uh, timeless time all these things have been extremely influential so he is uh, known uh, widely for his uh, three series book or in other words this uh, information age trilogy uh, which consists of the first book published in 1996 titled uh, the rise of the network society where he you know puts forward this basic argument about uh, network society the information age uh, economy society and culture and uh, the second book came out in uh, the year after 1997 uh, the power of identity the information age economy society and culture and the last one uh, appeared in 1998 uh, end of millennium the information age economy society and culture so these these three books <coughs> very voluminous books uh, you know made cases one of the extremely popular and one of the very uh, very very uh, important figure very influential figure in the um, in in the academic discussion so globalization so before uh, we actually started discussing um castles theories on uh, space and time uh, i thought it's um, important as well as interesting uh, to discuss one of his papers where he has written uh, about the uh, the need for transforming the discipline of uh, sociology so i know that uh, most of uh, the students most of the learners of this course are sociology students and there are sociology faculty and my myself is a student of uh, sociology so it's something uh, very uh, interesting to see what uh, castles has to say about uh, reorienting the discipline of uh, sociology so this article we will uh, have this session uh, to look at uh, uh, his argument about uh, sociology in a network uh, society before and, and after that we will uh, uh, take up uh, his substantive discussions on space and time uh, so this article titled the towards a sociology of the network society was published in 2000 uh, in the journal contemporary sociology so um, why that uh, such an uh, such an article is important because uh, we know that uh, sociology uh, is a product of modernity sociology as a discipline emerged uh, during the beginning of modernity because uh, uh, you know every every discipline emerges as a response to the kind of changing circumstances when a group of scholars feel that the existing frameworks or existing theories are incapable of explaining the large scale transformations 
then they uh, think uh, about fresh ideas about novel frameworks about new ways of looking at things and then gradually it gets consolidated into a new uh, theory or a new theoretical framework or a new and, and gradually that you know gets consolidated as a new uh, disciplinary uh, framework with very specific epistemological as well as uh, methodological uh, foundations so uh, sociology is a product of modernity in that sense because uh, sociology emerged in uh, europe especially in uh, western europe during the most tumultuous times of the uh, periods related to modernity so uh, in a sense sociology uh, became a necessity because the existing disciplines uh, were not really capable of explaining the kind of fundamental transformations happening uh, in the european societies during uh, this uh, 18th 19th and 20th uh, century so that is why uh, scholars or uh, intellectuals of that particular time they identified or they believed that a new discipline is required a new discipline that is dedicated uh, to understand to to explain or to study the uh, the distinct feature of the social so so the, the social emerges uh, for the first time uh, as a distinct uh, field of social of 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 inquiry so social is no longer uh, kind of seen as a residual uh, element of political or religious um, uh, you know life but it was seen as a, a discipline in its own uh, right so those who have studied uh, sociology especially classical sociological theories know that uh, sociology emerges uh after having been heavily influenced by natural sciences and then uh, sociology was modeled after a natural science sociology was seen as a uh, you know as 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 a positivist science sociology believed that uh, it is a science and it can use scientific methods to understand that so we we so that is why we understand sociology as a modern social science uh, it is a product of modernity it uh, emerges uh, uh, along with one of the foundational transformations of Uh, human society that is the emergence of modernity the rise of uh, individual freedom the rise of capitalism industrialism rise of nation state and a whole set of new ideas new institutions so so along with all these transformations sociology also emerges now the whole question of what uh, castles is addressing is that does a discipline like sociology require a reorientation during this particular time can we say that the emergence of globalization or the the whole discussion that we uh, uh, are are undertaking does it warrant that a discipline like sociology also reinvent itself does it have to or can it afford to continue with its own uh, age old uh, centuries old or decades old conceptual frameworks or methodologies or should it actively uh, reorient or reinvent itself should it actively critically look at its own uh, epistemological as well as methodological foundations and uh castles is a firm advocate a very strong advocate of the argument that sociology needs to reorient sociology cannot afford to have this old frameworks and methodologies to study society because what constitutes society and what is social that has undergone substantial transformations and if a discipline is not really sensitive to these transformations then after some time this discipline will become obsolete because uh, what it wants to explain uh we will will we'll move forward and then discipline will be incapable of understanding its subject matter so that is his argument in this particular paper so let us have a, a very it's not a very lengthy uh, chapter uh, paper some 8 uh, or 9 pages but he makes some very powerful arguments uh, very debatable arguments i would say i am not completely convinced by his uh, uh, you know uh, of 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 all the arguments that he makes but uh, it's very provocative it makes you think it makes you uh look into some of these arguments and then see what what kind of uh, responses is required so he says that the uh 21st century of the common era did not necessarily have to usher in a new society but it did so it is very very clear that the 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 beginning of a 21st century it uh, heralds the emergence of a new society and itself that itself is a big claim uh that are we saying that Uh, from uh, 2000 onwards uh, does it really represent a new society and he is very affirmative is very categorical that yes it constitutes a new society so um, what does he mean by this uh, new society uh, i'm i'm not going into this uh, paragraphs but uh, these are some of the important points so except for a few stubborn academic economists 
there is a widespread consensus that we have entered a new economy. I contend we have, we also live in a new society of which the new economy is only one component. Okay. So uh, we mentioned in the previous class that uh, if uh, modernity was associated with uh, uh, with industrialization or industrialism, uh, the post-modernity or late modernity is associated with informationalism. That's that is what uh, Castor uh, very very strongly uh, uh, argues. So this new uh, society is is characterized as a new economy which revolves around service industry or informationalism uh, and not uh, that of the uh, you know the industry. So that is a kind of an argument uh, again which is uh, which has not been completely uh, accepted by everybody. So that is why uh, he says that uh, except some stubborn uh, economists. So he says that the, the new economy is only part of a new society because it is not the society alone which uh, you know drives a society into its a new format but rather when a uh, it's, it's a part of a larger story. So um, since the focus is on sociology uh, not society I have no option but uh, to the schematic and declarative rather than analytical taking the li liberty to refer to reader to my trilogy of the matter and, and these are the three books that we mentioned uh, in the beginning of the class that very influential works which in which uh, uh, Cassis uh, puts forward a very 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 sweeping argument about the larger changes that happen. Here are in my views the main dimensions of social change that together and in their interaction constitute a new social structure underlying the new society. So why does uh, uh, Castle say that uh, the, a new society has come into picture or why or what are the reasons or, or what are, how, how does he argue it out and um, he says that uh, first uh, is a new technological paradigm based on the deployment of new information technologies and including genetic engineering as the information technology of living matter. So Castle's uh, argues that the, the first and the foremost uh, reason why he says that the world has moved into a new society is the influence of new forms of technology which includes uh, you know genetic technology as the information technology of a living matter. I understand technology following Claude Fisher as material culture that is as socially embedded process not as an exogenous factor affecting society. So uh, th there are very interesting discussions about how do you look at technology. Can we say that technology is impacting society uh, as if technology is a is a is an external object and which is impacting on society and making it to change or can we or should we look at a so, uh, technology as a part of a uh, society because when technology changes society also, ch also changes and uh, technologies change mainly because society is also changed. So, that, so there is a very interesting dialectical relationship between uh, the technology as well as uh, society and uh, it is not that uh, these two things are kind of kept uh, apart. Yet we must take seriously the material transformation of our social fabric. The new information technologies allow the formation of new forms of social organization and social interaction along electronically based information network. So this is, is one of the most compelling arguments that new forms of social interaction and new forms of social organization is taking place is taking through taking place through the electronically based information networks. Okay, so this is, is one of the important arguments where he uh, talks about spaces of flows that we will discuss in the coming classes. So this is one of his central argument and this he would uh, argue was something unprecedented. It never happened that you will be able to interact and not only that you will be able to interact your in a social organization is now passing through or it is taking place through uh, these, uh, these information networks and that itself has the capability to uh, shape and reshape and change the features of this social organization itself. So, um, yeah, so he, he considers it as a very important one. Second one, the second dimension of social change is precisely globalization, understood as the technological, organizational and institutional capacity of the core components of a given system, that is in, uh, economy, uh, to work as a unit in a real or chosen time on a planetary scale. So this is what uh, we have been discussing that uh, at a global level you are able to uh, interact, you are able to function at a given time. This historically new in contrast with the past forms of advanced internationalization which could not benefit from the information and communication technology able to handle the current size, complexity and speed of the global system. So uh, 
I think we have had uh, uh, quite a lot of discussion on that. Uh, how this globalization, especially enabled uh, and, and aided by this technology, uh, is something unprecedented. Even when we are, we we can say that during 50s and 60s there were you know transportation facilities, there were you know movement of people, technology, and and then goods. But um, none of that is something comparable with the kind of scale of uh, interaction uh, that is taking place in the contemporary times. And the third dimension is the enclosing of dominant cultural manifestation in an interactive electronic hypertext, which becomes the common frame of reference for symbolic processing of all sources and all messages. He is talking about the internet, the, the enormous potential of internet in, uh, in, in, you know, in virtually everything. We know that how, how different the world is today with the uh, advent of internet. So, he gives you some statistics about the uh, spread of internet and, and the kind of how, uh, you know, even people in the, in the uh, lower income uh, countries have been able to make use of that. And the fourth axis of change, largely uh, a consequence of global networks and global economy, communication and uh, knowledge and information, is the demise of the sovereign nation state. So he's again, it's a very categorical statement. He's using the word the demise, the death of the modern nation states. Now, um, now sitting here, we know that it's a very uh, far-fetched argument. It's it's too uh, too uh, too tall a claim to uh, say that. But uh, especially now, we we. Uh, uh, we, we we are seeing the kind of a you know uh, where in a scenario where nation states are coming back uh, strongly nation uh, a kind of a more uh, economic nationalism a kind of a national boundaries are becoming stronger so so but but he says that the very fundamental character of sovereign nation state has been fundamentally changed so he um, he talks about a series of you know transnational institutions uh, European Union NATO and AFTA. Uh, local governments and uh, global civil societies, a, a host of things that actually uh, talk about that, uh, which which uh, have become uh, more important than the nation states, according to, uh, you know, uh, Cassis. Uh, in another axis of structural change uh, is the fundamental crisis of patriarchy brought about by the women's insurgency and amplified by gay and lesbian social movements challenging heterosexuality as a foundation of family. There will be other forms of family as egalitarian values diffused by the day, not without struggle and setbacks. And this again, we know that the kind of fundamental transformation happening in the realm of sexuality, uh, the kind of uh, emphasis or the kind of naturalness that was associated with uh, heteronormativity, that a, a man uh, is supposed to get married to a woman and only that is natural. So these uh, ideas which, which looked at uh, a man and uh, both male and female as the only natural categories. That particular argument or understanding has been very, very systematically demolished. So, and, and then <clears throat> we are seeing proliferation of sexual identities and then, you know, a, a host of uh, alternative uh, identities. So, so these uh, changes have uh, transformation, have significant impact on the ways in which our families are defined and then run every day. Uh, but not the least, progress in scientific knowledge and the use of science to correct its one-sided development are defining the relationship between cultures and nature that characterize the industrial era. Uh, uh, a deep ecological consciousness is permeating the human mind and affecting the ways we live, produce, consume and perceive ourselves. A very, very important uh, uh, argument because, um, you know, uh, the one of the most important features of modernity was that modernity promised you uh, the absolute control over the nature through science and technology, because uh, modernity uh, argued that your uh, the, the the natural resource nature was seen as a resource, nature was seen as a resource, and science and technology was seen as as an aid for you to exploit the nature. So the progress of human being was seen as the most important uh, uh, in, in, important mission. So uh, again, that progress was defined in a very narrower sense in terms of increasing your GDP, increasing your industrial productivity, increasing your income, uh, increasing your consumerist, uh, you know, behavior. So later we realize that that's a very, very dangerous understanding of what means to be uh, progress. So we know that there is a, a proliferation of ecological uh, arguments and movements from the 1970s. Now we no longer look at the nature uh, merely as a resource. Now we know that the uh, it's, it's impossible for human beings to survive uh, 
uh, without uh, you know a, a nurturing uh, nature so this ecological consciousness uh, is in direct conflict with many of the taken for granted assumptions of science okay so science and technology we are now increasingly skeptical a, um, a, a singular uh, understanding about progress is even more skeptical we are in a scenario where we talk about the post developmentalism where we, uh, we we try to celebrate different alternative ways of existence alternative ways of development so so a singular unilinear evolutionary model uh, unilinear uh, evolutionary model uh, modeled after this modernization theory okay by a hosso sociologist is no longer the most uh, credit worthy uh, you know uh, proposition so then he brings in the other the main argument about the a network society a social structure of an information age so i mentioned earlier that uh, castles is known widely known for his theories on network society and argument about information age so he is bringing that argument here the new society is made up of networks global financial markets are built on electronic networks that process financial transactions in real time and um, you know he he argues that uh, the global economy is a network of financial transactions production sites markets and labor pools powered by money information and business organization so these points we will make it clear when we discuss in the uh, discuss the next classes where we talk about his argument about time and space and spaces of flows how he looks at uh, you know uh, the, the spaces as spaces being uh, happening through the flows not uh, through the places so his argument is that the the most dominant forms of social interaction or social organization is now taking place through networks and nodes and networks so this is a very uh, very radical argument and uh, so he's basically saying that the very character of society has been undergoing significant transformation so um, he says that um, networks are however a very old forms of uh, social organization there's nothing new about that people uh our community is having uh, uh forms of relation through kind of networks but again these are uncomparable we can't say that uh, the kind of network that existed some say for for 400 years ago or 1000 years ago is something comparable to that of today of course there were uh, networks existed but they are simply not comparable okay so uh, the problem their advantages are flexibility and adaptability characteristics essential of managing task in a world as volatile and mutable as ours the problem was embedded <coughs> inability of networks to manage complex city beyond a critical size networks are historically useful for personal interaction for solidarity for reciprocal support but they were bad performers in mobilizing resources and focusing these resources on the execution of a given task so um, he says that um, uh, in, in uh, you know traditionally these networks of course they they offered a lot of flexibility but they were not really uh, you know good at performing uh, certain things with more efficiency because the things that facilitate the interaction between networks and nodes were not very technologically sound so therefore flexibility can be achieved uh, without sacrificing performance because of the superior performing capacity networks through competition had gradually eliminating center hierarchical form of organization in their specific realm of activity so um, a network is a set of interconnected nodes with that so we understand that i i hope you can uh, visualize a, a a picture or or, a, or an imaginary about a network uh, where you talk about electronic network or network of neurons or or atomic uh, network you understand it as a uh, interconnected nodes a set of interconnected nodes networks are flexible adaptive structures that powered by information technology can perform any task that has been programmed in the network so he um, argues that um, you know in the in the new society a society that has come into picture after uh, the, uh, the the 2000 or in the, in the in the in the new millennium is characterized by this network and he is making a very tall claim making a very tall argument that the very structure of social of society has been transformed the prevalence of networks in organizing social practices redefined social structure in our society by social structure i mean organizational arrangements of human in relationships of production consumption experience and power as expressed in 
meaningful interaction framed by culture this is a very uh, useful definition for social uh, structure the term has been defined in so many different ways but uh, you can look at it as a very important uh, definition uh, provided by uh, you know manuel castles by social structure i mean organizational arrangements of humans in relationship to production consumption that is related to economic activity experience and power as expressed in a meaningful interaction framed by culture in information age these specific organizational arrangements are based on information networks powered by microelectronics based information technologies and in the near future by biologically based information technologies so um, he argues that the very nature of a social organization has been fundamentally transformed okay if earlier in the in the in the pre global era if social organization was based on its 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 uh, uh, you know uh, it it the, the very given fact they the social interaction take place in a given given space or in a given place okay so now in a modern society sorry in a global society you don't need to be there in the same place you don't need to be in the same geography you don't need to be in the given given physical uh, place you can be anywhere in the world but you are able to organize your activity in the with, with the same efficiency or even more efficiency and thereby you are able to you know get the work done at a global level okay so here fundamental transformation is happening to the whole notion of space and place as well as that of time so um he further explains theorizing social structure as interactive um, information networks so he uh, looks at some of the uh, you know uh, theories on uh, on 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 networks yet while building this tradition i advance the notion that 21st century sociology will have to expand the network based perspective uh, to the analysis of the entire social structure in accordance with the current trend of social evolution this implies more than analyzing social networks it will require reconceptualizing many social processes and dimensions as expressions of networks moving away from conceptual framework organized around the notions of centers and hierarchies so if centers and hierarchies were the uh, basis on which we visualize our society uh, in in the era of modernity now that model is no longer uh, helpful rather you will have to think of alternative models okay so um, he uh, the prevailing forms of business he gives two examples the prevailing forms of business organization emerge in advanced societies and diffusing throughout the global economy is the network enterprise okay which i define in sociological terms as the specific form of enterprise or whose system of means is constituted by the intersections of segments of autonomous systems of goods it follows a complete transformation of relationship of production and management and this of the occupational structure so the, the very nature of business organization is changing and uh, you know he gives the example he he uh, elaborates it uh, on the basis of three dimensions of production relations that is value making uh, relationship relations making and uh, decision making process as a very important uh, process involved in the modern business activity and these are kind of very different from that of the uh, you know conventional way in which we understand a process of production um, i don't think that we i'm, I'm going into that particular ex uh, example you can uh read that uh, you know uh, in detail a second example the transformation of spacious structures a classical theme of urban sociology so uh, yeah this is something more important because he uh, he is talking about his own theoretical um, arguments with the diffusion of electronically based communication technologies territorial contiguity ceases to be a precondition for the simultaneity of interactive social practices so you don't need to be same you don't need to be there in the same place in order to act together that that's uh, maybe uh, the way i can put it in a very simple way you don't need to be together okay the simultaneity uh, is ensured even if you are you know uh, miles apart so so you are the way in which you organize with each other it it can take place irrespective of your place okay where you actually sit where you are seated where where you actually uh, physically belong it hardly matter but you will be able to interact with each other but the depth of distance is not the end of the spatial dimension of society and this is a very crucial point which we will uh, explain in detail in the coming class first the space of place based on meaningful physical proximity 
continues to be a major source of experience and function for many people and in many circumstances. So, uh, uh, Cassis makes a distinction between spaces of places and spaces of flows. Okay, we will uh, elaborate it later. So, uh, in conventional societies, in traditional societies, these spaces of places were very important because everything happened in a particular place. I, I hope we have discussed it several times, especially when we discussed Anthony Giddens. In a traditional society, in an agricultural society, if a uh, if a social event has to take place, if a social if social interaction has to take place, it has to take place in a given place where everybody is present. You can't imagine uh, something happening uh, into that society uh, from from uh, you know things that are happening some hundred kilometers away. So things happen in a given time in a given place only when people are present. There something happens. So that kind of spaces of places, okay, spaces of places, uh, Cassis argues, is still relevant because that is how, that is from where people derive their notions of experiences and, and then the kind of per, very personal direct experiences. And second, distance, interactive communications does not eliminate space, it transforms it. A new forms of space emerges, the spaces of flows. I will elaborate it later in the, in the maybe the very next class we are going to discuss this particular term. So, this uh, follows, uh, this argument follows from his larger argument about the transformation of uh, from the spaces of uh, places to spaces of flows. Now, uh, then he gives the example of a global city uh, in uh, the strict uh, anal analytical sense, it is not any particular city and empirically it extends to spaces located in many cities around the world and some extra large, other large and still others not so large. The global city is made of territories that in different cities ensure the management of a global economy and global transformation networks. So, um, uh, you know, he gives the elaboration. Thus, a few blocks in Manhattan are part of the global city, but most of the New York, uh, in fact, most of Manhattan is very local, not global. So, uh, he is talking about how even in a given city, how certain part is not, are, are not connected with the larger global processes. So, um, so the global city is a network of non-contiguous territories reunited around the task of managing globalism by networks that transcend locality. Thus, it is the connection between local and global rather than the end of geography in the age of globalization that becomes the appropriate perspective for the new urban sociology. So, we discussed it when we discussed, uh, you know, Saskia Sassen. Uh, yesterday, how uh, these new uh, ideas about space emerge, especially with respect to urban geography. Uh, the central analytical question then becomes how shared social meaning is produced out of disjointed spatial units reunited in purely instrumental global logic. Anyway, I think we can leave it here. Uh, His, um, yeah, so he he uh, fundamentally what he argued is that he uh, argues uh, to re to 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 reiterate the point that the very social structure is changed. Okay, the very social structure is changed, and uh, if the social structure is changed, then it requires uh, a new epistemological uh, orientation from the discipline to make sense of that. Uh, you know that I I hope you know the relation between. Uh, uh, epistemology and uh, ontology or epistemology and uh, you know the, the kind of a methodology. So, uh, Cassis is of very strong opinion that the very, very what, what does it mean to be a society? What does it mean to be a social structure? Okay, this is fundamentally changed from what we understood from the modern, the period of modernity that uh, kind of a very rigid hierarchies and, and then uh, you know those uh, questions about center, periphery, hierarchies, these are changed and what we are seeing is a kind of a more network society and um, without any hesitation I would say that it is a very tall claim, okay? it is a very far fetched claim uh, to say that the very social structure is changed from that of, of, of uh, traditional society uh, from say modern society to a kind of a network society but uh, Cassis is making that argument very 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 strong because that is how you provoke new thinking. That is how you provoke people to think in that, that uh, direction. So, some amount of exaggeration, some amount of uh, provocation, they are all in order. So, so, following from that argument, he talks about new methodology. Because if uh, 
your epistemology changes if your ontology changes and then your your epistemology changes then that will necessarily get reflected in the changes in your methodology as well because uh, your methodologies you are trying basically you are trying to understand uh, what 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 certain thing is you are trying to use certain method to make sense of 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 of, of that so if that very thing itself is changed if your uh, disciplinary orientation your knowledge system about a particular uh, subject matter is changed then it definitely needs uh, orientation in the the, the in the way in which you employ various methods so uh, he talks about um, new a new methodology should sociology think about new methodologies and his uh, argument is a emphatic yes so uh, sociology is an empirical science and then uh, he gives that uh, larger uh, argument so so if the society has become a new society where 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 uh, uh, networks uh, is 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 constituting the social structure then you require a discipline uh, which has a methodological orientation towards capturing this uh, features of the network isn't it because uh, network in the conventional system was not the mainstay of sociology uh, it, it was it was only on the periphery so now uh, his argument is that if the social structure is changed significantly uh, into that of a network then your methodology also need to reorient towards that so uh, he talks about a series of uh, uh, you know things uh, on the other hand enhanced power of computers and new flexible computer programming languages enable us to handle the complexity of an interactive network structures of precise terms so a host of uh, new um, you know technologies is required new methodologies is required new methods are required um, he would say that uh, computer based system analysis and then um, you know simulation models and uh, you know network analysis and a, and a host of other new types of methods uh, are required but new computing facility in dynamic interaction or alternative assumptions produced at high speed may change everything in this sense computational literacy that is knowing how to interact with computers rather than just statistical programs may be a fundamental learning requirement so uh, finally uh, he uh, argues he uh, that overall sociology should and will overcome the sterile artificial opposition between quantitative and qualitative research and between theory and empirical study again it's a very uh, important argument because you uh, usually make the distinction between quantitative study and qualitative study so in quantitative study you use uh, more statistical tools you use uh, you know surveys you use uh, questionnaires you tend to quantify your data into numbers whereas in qualitative study you uh, don't uh, get into this number business rather you use uh, mostly anthropological methodology ethnography and then participant observation you tend to elaborate you do ethnographic research so he argues that distinction will uh, will slowly uh, you know uh, disappear and also the distinction between the theory and then empirical study so uh, he foresees so he very strongly uh, argues that uh, sociology as a discipline must change uh, in order to uh, stay relevant because the society which it wants to study is undergoing systematic or or significant transformation and as i mentioned these arguments are emerging from his larger argument about the uh, fundamental changes in social uh, structure and then society so that's what we are going to discuss in the coming class okay so we will uh, stop here and then meet for the next class thank you